Welcome to the Sports on Prime. I'm Gary L. Smith, and we begin with the UEFA Europa League. We are seeing Arsenal playing Atletico Madrid, and it's currently 0 0 at halftime. Diego Simeone, you can see him. He is not in the dugout, he's in the stands because he's been sent off for an earlier altercation. Atleti also down to 10 men because of a red card. There were two yellow cards in the space for uh, space of 10 minutes for one of their players, and he's off. It's nil nil in this game. It's the final game in Europe for Arsene Wenger before the season ends. Right, still moving on in football, but of the local variety, and Kwesin Yantichi's decision to sack George Efri, his vice president, is still trending. And in reaction, Frank Nelson. A member of the executive committee of the Ghana Football Association gives his take on the decision. Yes, he announced uh, his displeasure to continue working with George Freire, who happened to be his vice. And uh, I just want to bring it to the notice. It's not something anybody could contest because it was an appointed position. If it was an elected position, it could have been a different situation. So he chose them to work with them, especially George as his vice and other members to work with them as anchor. So four of them to work with him. And if he says that he does not want to work with the same person I have chosen, I don't think I'll have more issue for him to, you know, to explain to me because it's his own opinion to have chosen him. He must have chosen anybody and if he decides to make a change now, I will have to wait to see who he's going to bring on board. I will work and make sure that the Ghana Football Association is selling in a very nice way. Is anybody in the executive committee that is incapable of running the association? Yes, it's not something you do alone because you have other people who will strengthen you, but if the FA president calls any of us and says, look, I want to pick you as the vice or whatever position and he wants us to stay the affairs, definitely I think we should be able to step into the shoes because we've acquired much experience apart from being in the Football Association we have been in club managers and so the experience is not far from us. So I don't think it's anything somebody should panic. Anybody who is appointed as the vice president should be able to do the job easier. And at the end of the day, he's not going to work alone. We are there as a body, so we all work together and make sure that we achieve results. In boxing, there's going to be two bouts that will be taking Ghana's attention. One, of course, will be the one involving... Um, Isaac the Royal Storm Dog in the US, but in Ghana as well, George Ashi will be fighting. He'll be fighting a South African opposition. And Samuel Captain, supervisor for the BBO Africa, believes that the Ghanaian will give off a good fight. Uh, there wasn't much difficulty in it, yeah, but um, from beginning we encountered a little bit problems, and I don't want to talk about it here. But let me say that uh, this fight is going to be great, and both boxers are in their caliber. They have their records, they are champions of themselves, so I expect them to do good fight for everybody to see. And genuinely, genuinely, I'm the supervisor for Africa. So whoever wins, wins the fight. And I wish them good luck. Meanwhile, the trainers for both fighters believe that it's going to be a blockbuster indeed. Christened Jesus Gabriel Magdaleno, the Mexican-born boxer based in Las Vegas has bigger fight experience. In his early days in his career, he fought like inexperienced boxers in his first nine bouts. They included unknown boxing brands like Jamie Gutierrez. Out of these, those against Sean Nicol, Esteban Nicol, and Jonathan Alcantara traveled the distance. Magdaleno's next five bouts had boxers who had an average of 12 fights. One of these won him the WBO North American version of the Bantamweight title. The next six fights got him a new set of opponents to test his skill and build him for future challenges. They included Carlos Fulgencio, Henry and Luis Maldonado, Raul Hildalgo, and Roberto Castaneda. Interestingly, these fights did not travel the distance as he recorded knockout wins in all of them. In these fights, he combined pace, crisp punching to stun his opponents. Five fights later, Magdaleno assumed world title status by dethroning Nonito Donaire via a unanimous decision. Interestingly, Magdaleno was more calculated and less pacey in this fight. So the question is, will Magdaleno approach Isaac Dogbe, who defeated him during amateur days with pace and constant attack, as well as two three-punch combinations? Well, the ring will tell. So that was a preview, sorry about that, that was a preview for the bout between Isaac Dogwe 
and Jesse Magdaleno. That will be fought in the USA on Saturday evening at 11 p.m. Today, a very controversial ruling has been passed by the IAAF, the World Athletics Governing Body. It says that eligibility rules for females in the 400 and 1,500 meter events have been tweaked. The IAAF has once again come under the spotlight after the organization issued new eligibility regulations for females who compete in the 400 to 1500 meter events. The major talking point is around testosterone levels and what levels are appropriate to compete in those specific events. Female athletes who have high testosterone will be forced to take medication in order to lower their levels or they won't be able to compete. South Africa's Kasta Semenya is one athlete who has taken center stage with regards to the new regulations, with the Olympic gold medalist said to be forced down the path of medication to reduce her testosterone levels or else risk being ineligible to compete in her favorite events. The ruling has come under fire, especially in South Africa, with many supporting Semenya, whom they feel has been unfairly targeted. And that's it for the sport. We will.